Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about my Baroque bassoon, why I use it, and what to look for in a good instrument if you're on the lookout for an upgrade or for your very first instrument. So, are you ready for this? <laughs> Firstly, I want to clarify that when I talk about Baroque bassoons, I'm talking about copies of originals made today. Most historical bassoonists will tell you that all Baroque bassoons are not created equal. There are a number of different models available from different makers, each with their own set of strengths, and, well, let's be honest, there are a lot of weaknesses too. I'm actually going to stop here for a second. I'm not making this video to comment on instruments which I don't play. I'm not doing YouTube video reviews of Baroque bassoons that I don't actually professionally perform on. So now that that's out of the way, let's begin. Most of my professional engagements over the last five years have been playing music by J.S. Bach. Most of the cantatas and the big sacred works are what I dig my teeth into. The St. John Passion, the Easter Oratorio, the Christmas Oratorio are, are good examples of that. In my opinion, the sacred works of Bach make up the bulk of the most challenging repertoire for people like me for a number of reasons. The first being that Bach tends to go further up the circle of fifths than his contemporaries, which really pushes the limits of what's possible in the low register of his bassoon. As you'll see in a minute, the low F sharp, the low C sharp, and the low D sharp are in no way easy notes to play. Their reliability is dependent not just on the bassoon you're playing, but the quality of the reed itself. Furthermore, it's one thing to be able to play the Baroque bassoon with ease and security, but playing in an orchestral setting is something completely different. More often than not, the bassoonist isn't playing an independent line as it does in the symphony orchestra. Instead, it's simply playing in the bass group. And the fewer players there are in the bass group, the harder it is for the bassoonists um, not to stick out. And it doesn't, I'm just not talking about playing the wrong note here. Understanding how to play a bass line is one thing, but I assure you learning how to play the Baroque bassoon in the context of a basso continuo group is an entirely different skill altogether. In an ideal world, the basso continuo group, which is usually made up of a cello, double bass, harpsichord, or organ, and the bassoon, has to sound as one voice. And as the bassoon has the most distinctive sound quality, as well as being quite loud up front, in order to build that boutique continuo group sound, uh, we have to blend all the time, which can be a massive challenge when some of the notes on the instrument are, are either unable to play at just the right pitch, or they're kind of honky. Honky, that's the technical term. So circling back, this is why Bach's sacred music is so hard to play. We have to go way down the rabbit hole in the sharp keys, all the while fighting our instrument to play in tune and blend our sound with the instruments around us. It's no surprise then to know that back in the day, J.S. Bach got into a knife fight with a bassoonist. But more on that another time. The next reason as to why this repertoire is so hard for Baroque bassoonists is that we often have to play this repertoire in churches. And before you jump to any conclusions... It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. You see, it would be this mat that you would put on the floor and would have different conclusions written on it that you could jump to. What I mean by that is this. That most churches in Europe have no climate control whatsoever. In the winter, they get warm when there are lots of bodies in the room, but otherwise, they're ice boxes. In the summer, some can be cool, but others, piping hot. Oh man, the building is on fire. I said, no, what? I got my three kids and we bounced out. Baroque bassoons, like most period instruments, are extremely sensitive to changes in temperature. In cold conditions, a bassoon will flatten in pitch, and you may even have to feel the need to clip your reed shorter to perform in tune. In hot conditions, the bassoon will sharpen in pitch, and it will be nearly impossible to play at A415 Hz on your winter reed. To be honest, I try and avoid playing my Baroque bassoon in the summer unless I know that the project is in an air-conditioned venue. So if I'm playing a lot of Bach, is there an instrument in particular which might be better to suited to these challenges than others? Well, in my opinion, yes. I play on a copy of a bassoon 
by uh, Johann Heinrich Eichentopf by Peter de Koning, a Dutch bassoon maker. This instrument can play all of the notes in the bassoon's practical range, that is from low B flat to high A, and it, it can extend up to high C sharp, under duress, let's say. This instrument has one of, if not the best, low registers in Baroque bassoons out there today, and there's a great low C, low D, and the low C sharp and F sharp are stable enough to play quietly in orchestra without sticking out. The instrument's tone and pitch are very consistent in all the registers, and it's flexible enough to tackle most professional situations. Furthermore, it just has a great quality of sound, and many professionals sound fantastic on it. When I ordered this instrument in 2010, I had been inspired by the recordings of Alberto Grazia and Sergio Azzolini, who were using this instrument then. And today there are other great recordings out there by people like Benny Agassi and Peter Whelan. I'll put some links down below uh, for you to check them out. As with every period bassoon, has its imperfections. Slurring certain intervals in the high register are not possible, and the A below middle C, excuse me, can become unstable as the reed ages. The biggest challenge with this instrument for me was finding the right reed. Unlike so many other Baroque bassoons, this instrument does not require a contra bassoon style reed setup. After years of hand shaping and scraping down Baroque cane, I had my own custom shaper made and developed my own profile for it. With the right reed, the instrument can be a real joy to play, but without one, it can be extremely frustrating. Reeds are the main barrier between having a functioning instrument on the one side and a beautiful, ornate table leg or lamp post on the other. So much time during my first year with this instrument that could have been spent practicing was instead spent, you know, scraping away, trying to figure out the rough dimensions I'd need to make all of the registers function at the same time. Many years later, I now have specialized equipment built specifically to accommodate the many different Baroque bassoons out there today, so those barriers to a joyful or pleasant experience when learning these instruments, um, they don't have to be there anymore. If you are interested in taking this up for the first time, then I highly recommend that you find a teacher close to you. They'll have a breadth of experience with the copy that they're playing on, they'll have a read system, and we'll be able to get you started. Now, that is really the best advice I can give you. However, some of you won't be living near an historical bassoonist, so maybe follow this advice when looking for your own instrument. Number one, don't play on an original instrument. Just don't. No one will be able to help you if you can't get it to work, and no bassoon maker or technician is willing to fiddle with those instruments. Most of the time, original instruments will be built to play at a pitch which is not a 415 hertz, so there will always be trouble with it being too high or too low. Just don't touch them. Two, the instrument should have an easily speaking low register. The low C, D, E flat, E, F, and F sharp must be available. They can't just be contextually there. You know what I'm talking about. You know, only if I play loud or if I tongue really hard. No. From low G to the G above middle C, there cannot be notes which are missing. A 12-tone scale needs to be there. Ideally, at least, they would be relatively equally divided. Now, given all of that, if you can get a high A out of the instrument, that's great too. Don't buy a secondhand instrument that you haven't tried yourself, or that hasn't been tried by a colleague or a mentor whom you trust and who gives you the thumbs up. Finally, the instrument should feel comfortable in your hands. Some instruments have tone hole placements which are just slightly hard to reach, and you don't want to put yourself in an awkward position by default just to play a basic scale. So usually I find this an issue with the placement of the right hand third finger hole in relation to the F key. I sometimes find instruments where those two fingers sit either too close together or too far apart. So be conscious of the instrument in your hands when you first try it. Well, I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you like these videos and you would like to support them, then please consider becoming a patron via Patreon. And please don't forget to like on YouTube 
share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.